Welcome to my channel. Divers from oil companies located within the North Sea have been discovering the remains of a drowned ancient city, which once spanned from the UK all the way to Denmark. An ancient city so massive its suspected population has been estimated well into the tens of thousands. A team of climatologists, archaeologists, and geophysicists have now successfully mapped the area, which has revealed just how vast and expansive this once lost land once was. Many specialists are now claiming this was once the real heartland of Europe. This enormous civilization is now believed to have dated back to some 8,000 years ago and that the landmass was submerged over a period of several thousand years, a submersion which began some 20,000 years prior. Dr. Richard Bates of the Department of Earth Sciences at St. Andrews, who organized the Drowned Landscapes exhibit, covering the finds within the UK, says the data reveals the human story behind Doggerland, a now submerged city of the North Sea that was once larger than many modern European countries. Could these discoveries reveal Doggerland as the real lost city of Atlantis? Several hypotheses have placed the sunken island of Atlantis within modern northern Europe. Most noted among such researchers is Olaus Rudbeck, who suspected that Doggerland, as well as a Viking Bergen island, which is thought to have been flooded by a mega tsunami following the Storega slide in 6100 BC, is the real location of Atlantis, a proposition he put forward all the way back in the 1600s. Some have proposed the Celtic Shelf as a possible location, and that there is certainly links to Ireland. Many places have been put forward for the possible location of the sunken city throughout the years, yet none have revealed ruins worthy of such claims, many of these areas being too small to have housed such an enormous city. Doggerland, however, fits the bill. Not only could it turn out to be the largest ancient civilization found on Earth, but it also rests in a possible location based on historical research for the city of Atlantis. It was submerged at one point in its history, and it is revealing astonishing ruins of a once great and presently unknown civilization. Dr. Bates, a geophysicist, said Doggerland was the real heartland of Europe until sea levels rose to give us the UK coastline of today. We have speculated for years on the lost land's existence, from bones dredged by fishermen all over the North Sea, but it's only since working with oil companies in the last few years that we've been able to recreate what this lost land looked like. When the data was first being processed, I thought it unlikely to give us any useful information. However, as more area was covered, it revealed a vast and complex landscape. We have now been able to model its flora and fauna, build up a picture of the ancient people that lived there, and begin to understand some of the dramatic events that subsequently changed the land, including the sea rising and a devastating tsunami. The research project is a collaboration between St. Andrews and the Universities of Aberdeen, Birmingham, Dundee, and Wales Trinity St. David. I will keep you posted on their future discoveries. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. We recently came across a most curious artifact one which has been claimed as having once been found, just like a handful of other exquisite objects we have previously shared, within a lump of ancient coal. It is a once smelted, solid iron recreation of a face, whose owner could have lived an unimaginably long time ago. With the claim written by John D. Morris, PhD, quote, I was recently contacted by an older lady, who grew up in the coal mining area of Appalachia. Her ancestors, having lived in the area for generations, her now deceased father was a miner who had once made a remarkable discovery embedded within a coal seam, a human face made from cast iron. Like most people, they had been taught that coal is far too old to contain any human artifacts. The miner was so proud and perplexed by his find it eventually became a family heirloom and was simply named Man. As a large, heavy object, it was eventually used as an ornament, decades later becoming stored among his belongings. She distinctly remembers her father's story of its discovery and the care he had taken with this prized object, having recently rediscovered it among her father's possessions." End quote. The owner of this artifact has requested to remain anonymous and to withhold her identity. This makes the story even more appealing to us, as throughout our time researching these types of claims, and indeed artifact, 
we find that those who are pushing a supposed discovery, publicizing themselves while touring an object, are often in a search for a profit and recognition. Thus, as she is seemingly fearful of the artifact's disappearance, it would seem her story would align more with someone who possesses an item, not only of an extraordinary, incredibly controversial age, but also has a sentimental value, one which outweighs any idea of selling the item or even risking losing it from exposing its location. How old is the so-called man? Who could have made it, pouring cast iron into a mold resulting in an exact duplicate of the man's face in the form of a three-dimensional mask. Could we be peering at the face of an ancestor once of incredible importance, one from a lost civilization, a lost time within our planet's history? We find such possibilities incredibly intriguing. Along with the many other unexplainable feats, undoubtedly left by a highly advanced, highly capable lost civilization. There are the countless examples of extreme precision stone cutting. Not only is this remarkable past capability visible in their many stone walls and fortresses alike, but also in their exquisite artwork. If we look upon the statues of ancient Egypt, for example, the symmetry, along with the proportional precision present within their statues, is not only perfection personified, but unquestionably far too advanced for the so-called academically claimed builders to have achieved. According to the academics, along with their subsequent supposed accurate writings, these extraordinary feats of artistic perfection were somehow created by a group of individuals who were merely equipped with copper tools. Not only is this claim clearly ignorant of reality, but to create such works of symmetrical accuracy was unquestionably the work of a group of individuals far more advanced than even that of the Victorians, let alone those who thrived along the banks of the Nile more than 3,000 years ago. Not only is this precision present along the Giza Plateau, but it is also found at ancient sites all around the world. Masterfully created statues and structures often carved straight out of stone bedrock, with such vision and artistic prowess that many now presume that the individuals capable of such feats must have had advanced machinery at their disposal. Most of ancient India, for example, is created with such delicacy and exactness that we today could only accomplish the same with the utilization of modern machines. Furthermore, many scholars and independent researchers even a number of highly recognized academic Egyptologists have reluctantly concluded that many of the basalt, gypsum, and other vases shaped from extremely hard stones, and indeed a number of multi-ton sarcophagus lids, were indeed turned into the shapes we see them as today, on some kind of ancient, enormous lathe. This conclusion is made regardless of the fact that to create such enormous stoneworks on a lathe would have undoubtedly been out of the realms of capabilities for those who are currently claimed as their creators. Not only do the ornamental artifacts of Egypt and much further afield strongly indicate machined working, but there is also overwhelming evidence of these same machines reminiscent of modern stone cutting equipment present all over the world. Yet conveniently, it is quietly ignored by the same individuals who have supposedly unraveled the history of these sites. Puma Panku, Giza's basalt floor, other areas throughout Giza, Peru, Malta, the list goes on. All these sites not only indicate an advanced, highly capable constructor, but also possess countless marks that, as of yet, we can only explain logically as having been left by precision, quick-rotation, stone-cutting machinery. They are yet another overwhelming collection of evidence, which not only flies in the face of current academic explanation, but proof of an advanced, now lost civilization having once been responsible for these sites' construction. They are highly compelling. 
In 1990, an Italian geologist named Angelo Pitoni would find an unusual stone while visiting Sierra Leone, a mysterious artifact that has baffled all who have studied it. A local Fuller chief was said to have given it to Pitoni, a blue stone with mysterious white lines upon its surface. After returning to Europe, Pitoni took the stone to the Institute of Natural Sciences of Geneva and then University La Sapienza in Rome for further analysis. To his surprise, tests revealed that it was not a turquoise or indeed anything that could officially be identified. Furthermore, the blue stone didn't correspond to any known mineral. But the most intriguing thing is its color. Researchers still do not understand how the stone has acquired or retained its color. This even though several universities and laboratories have analyzed the artifact at great length. It seems its color remains a mystery. Mysteriously, at the University of Utrecht, the stone underwent several tests with use of strong acids, but none of the acids could affect the stone. It was even heated to over 3000 degrees Celsius, yet its composition wasn't altered. When a small piece of the stone was pulverized and viewed under the microscope, it curiously lost its color. Now known as the Sky Stone, according to analysis, an amazing 77.17% of the stone is somehow made of pure oxygen. The remaining percentage was divided between carbon, calcium and another unknown element. When researchers crushed a piece of the sky rock and mixed it with acetone, hexane and methylene and then enhanced the extractions with ultrasound, they were eventually able to locate an organic compound that is currently unknown to science. Dated at 55,000 years old, just what is the sky stone? How could it possibly be made mostly of oxygen? Is this stone a past remnant left by a once advanced civilization? Or maybe its origins are not even local to Earth. Amazingly, it seems that Pitoni's sky stone is not unique. There has in fact been similar finds in other places of the Earth, most notably Brazil. The other sample of sky stone was submitted to GRS Swiss Labs for testing and analysis by an anonymous dealer. Intrigued, American artist and designer Jared Collins tried to buy the small cutaway piece from the dealer so he could study it further but the dealer refused to sell it. He wouldn't even name a price for the larger full stone. It seems there are indeed other exhibits of this curious stone made mostly of pure oxygen in existence, yet the mystery surrounding their makeup and origin persists to this day. Osaka Castle, one of the most important historical structures in Japan, having played a defining role in unifying Japan during the 16th centuries. It is a structure whose enigmatic characteristics we have covered in the past. The main tower of Osaka Castle, situated on a plot of land roughly one square kilometer in diameter, is built atop two raised platforms, supported by sheer walls of cut rock created using a technique called burdock piling. With some of these wall faces, also containing compelling precision ancient stonework, a feature we initially focused on in our previous video. However, there also exists other intriguing anomalies within the grounds of the castle, a series of stoneworks of gigantic proportions. Enormous walls, which many of you may not be aware of, rarely shared by academia. These sections were created with polygonal masonry techniques, a method of advanced block building unexplained, subsequently lost to the eons. Due to their unexplained nature, these hidden features, we believe, are clear evidence of an original structure, far outdating the modern castle and indeed attested historical accounts. Yet what is undoubtedly the most striking characteristic of these surviving barriers is their size. Many of the surviving blocks, each of a unique shape, were once masterfully placed, seemingly effortlessly atop one another, with incredible precision stones stretching far into the hundreds of tons. This astonishing feat of ancient engineering, utilizing blocks of gargantuan sizes, is also present at many other ancient sites throughout the world. It is not only indicative of a lost, advanced, highly capable civilization, but the question as to how they managed to cut, move, 
and eventually place such enormous weighted stones with such precision remains a baffling mystery yet to be unraveled. Furthermore, there not only exists astonishingly huge polygonal masonry within the grounds, but there also still exists mysterious carved stones in and around the grounds of Osaka Castle. Perplexing megalithic stones, unquestionably carved for a past purpose, which possibly, due to their immense size, are the sole surviving remnants of other ancient features, now nearly all but eroded away. As such, their past function is now unknown. Yet regardless of these unanswered questions, we maintain a hypothesis that like the many other astonishing ancient ruins found on differing continents, for example, Baalbek, the Great Pyramids, Sacsayhuaman, Qulap, etc., that due to these sites' characteristics, specifically the immense size of the stonework involved in their original construction, and thus their once impenetrable nature, were utilized by a later civilization, and Osaka Castle being no exception, built upon a foundation far older than modern academia would ever willingly admit to. The fact that no modern explanation exists pertaining to how these gigantic megaliths came to be placed where they are found today, in addition to an absent understanding or explanation as to how polygonal masonry was completed, especially with such enormous quarried stones, we feel is strong evidence to support our posit that the foundations of these ancient structures are far older than their current dating. Foundations which were almost definitely the work of a past highly capable civilization, responsible for all the other as yet unexplainable ancient wonders found around the globe. The question is, who were these ancient builders? How did they move such massive stones? Did they utilize technologies reminiscent of modern-day lifting equipment? Were all of these ancient structures built by the same governing force, with the slight variations present from location to location only as a result of the different cultures who were responsible for the actual undertaking? Was this knowledge of highly advanced ancient building techniques shared worldwide? If this is the case, it is a strong indicator that most of what academia continues to peddle as a complete timeline of man is vastly inaccurate and missing vast chapters of past development. Where did this highly advanced group go? Why are there so many quarries and indeed unfinished ancient megaliths found all over the world, spanning as far as the notoriously remote island of Easter, all seemingly abandoned abruptly? Did this civilization fall victim to cataclysm? Or perhaps their fate was far more transcendental? Regardless of these unanswered questions regarding their final destination, we feel Osaka Castle is undoubtedly yet another example of extraordinary ancient feats of prehistoric engineering by a group we are yet to fully understand, and as such is undoubtedly highly compelling. Thanks for watching.